Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I realized that I haven't really shared much about how I got into watercolor and kind of more specifics about my background with art. So I wanted to share that with you today. Uh, so if you were to go back in time and tell my young self who had first tried watercolors about how I would grow up to love them so much, they would be the medium I would use almost exclusively, I would have thought you were crazy because when I first tried watercolors, I despised them. It was not a positive experience at all. As a kid, I always loved to draw and sketch. So I worked with pencil a lot, moved into colored pencil as well. I used some markers. I also had worked with acrylic paints and dabbled with oil paints. And my Grammy had been an artist, which I think was partly why I first became interested in art because I saw her artwork and thought it was so incredible. I wanted to try and do the same. So she was particularly good with watercolors, especially landscapes. They were just absolutely stunning. And I was really inspired by that. So at that point, I hadn't really tried watercolors much apart from just kind of the very basic little doodles you do in grade school. Um, but when I first decided to try them, I thought, hey, like my Grammy does this, I wanna try and do the same. And it did not go well at all. <laughs> I did a couple paintings that where I, I was like, I don't understand how anyone can use this paint. It's difficult. It doesn't do what I want it to do. And I'm really bad at it. There's no way. And so that experience really defined how I felt about watercolor going forward. And so I abandoned it and thought I'm never going to work with watercolors again. And for several years, I didn't. I continued to create art. Art has always been a part of my life and I just love it. So drawing and, and painting with other mediums, using other materials, I was definitely still doing that. And then when I started university, um, I ultimately wound up becoming an art major. And uh, again, I was working with other materials like with drawing with pencils and colored pencils, marker, as well as charcoal, things like that. And then I had worked with acrylics and oil paints and I got into one of my upper level courses and circumstances were some of the requirements for the class. I thought, okay, I'm going to see if I can use watercolors. It was actually a drawing class. It was like an alternative processes and materials class. And so I asked the professor, hey, I know that watercolor is more of a traditional painting medium, but it's not really a traditional drawing medium. Can I try that for this drawing course? And she said yes, which I was uh, kind of terrified. <laughs> I couldn't believe I had decided to do that because I thought, well, this could either go well or it could be really terrible and I may have set myself up for failure because again I was just remembering all those years back when I had first tried watercolor how much I disliked it and didn't enjoy it and didn't think I was any good at it. But thankfully at that point I had enough experience under my belt with drawing and painting using other mediums and tools and supplies over all those years that when I tried watercolors again for the first time, something just clicked and I loved them. I just, I, so I, I did a painting, my first watercolor painting in several years, um, for this, uh, upper level art course at, at university. And I was so proud of how it turned out. It just felt so good to, use a medium that I thought I would never use again and, and have it go really well. So, and since that point, I have come so far. I've learned so much more as I've worked with watercolors. It has been over a decade now that I've been working with watercolors and I have all this knowledge about how it works and have gone really in depth with it. And just, um, I absolutely love painting with watercolors. It is so much fun. And I wish that some of the knowledge I have now I had had when I had first tried watercolors because I think I would have avoided a lot of frustration and grief just having uh, some of those really basic things, just knowledge about how watercolor works. 
So, um, a little more about that in a bit, but just over the years, kind of as I've painted with watercolors and, um, own my own art business full time, Corey Frank Creates LLC. I create weekly videos with art tutorials and things like that, and just time lapse paintings, uh, generally with watercolor. Sometimes I'll have some drawing videos in there, but for the most part, I use watercolor. And I've also done in-person workshops quite a bit. They tend to be those kind of shorter one-shot type things where it's like, okay, here's a two-hour workshop. I'm going to introduce you kind of quick and dirty to the very basic stuff of watercolor. And then at the end, you will leave with a finished product because they use stencils. And I love doing that because it's a really great way to introduce people to watercolor in a really fun, relaxed environment. There's not really a lot of pressure and it takes some of that sort of scariness out of it. And kind of through my experience with that, I've come to realize that I am not the only one who had a really negative first experience with watercolor. I've talked to several other people who have felt the same way where they're like, yeah, I tried watercolor and it just ooh, didn't really go well. And a lot of time that's why they sign up for my work, my little short workshop so they can just try it again and see what it's like. Uh, I've also talked to lots of people who are, who have never even tried watercolor before because they're really intimidated by it. They're a little too nervous to try. They're not sure where to start. And um, yeah, it, it's definitely, in my opinion, watercolor is the most challenging medium. So it's understandable how folks may see, you know, other people painting with watercolor and think, I, I would love to try that, but I'm not sure where to start. I've also talked with folks who have worked with watercolor a little bit, or maybe it's been a little while since they've used it and they're wanting to get back into it or just get really nitty gritty with some of the details and techniques and principles of how watercolor works. So through kind of all of that experience and being a watercolor painter, being a professional artist, I decided to develop an online watercolor course. Uh, which will actually be available in at three different levels. So I'm going to have a watercolor basics course, an intermediate watercolor course, and then a watercolor like a pro course. And in those courses, I am going to be sharing a bunch of the knowledge that I have now after working with watercolors for so long that um, are just really going to help set people forward with really knowing how it works and relatively quickly starting to paint on their own. It has been so fun to be able to take the knowledge that I have and kind of package it in a really, <clears throat> excuse me, understandable way in bite-sized chunks. This is exactly the way I would have wanted to have the material presented to me when I first started out with watercolors. Um, so that I would have just had that knowledge and know how of how they worked and how to get started with them um, and all of that. So that's just kind of a bit about my background and kind of how I've gotten to this point, particularly with watercolors. I just love them so much and I want other people to be able to fall in love with them as well and just have a lot of fun with them. So I've been talking a lot about the kind of idea of I wish I'd had certain knowledge when I first started using watercolor paints. So I want to actually share with you five things I wish I had known when I first tried watercolors. The first one is brush quality does matter. There are so many different kinds of brushes out there. It can be overwhelming. And when I first started out, I went for the cheapest possible set I could find. I tend to be a frugal person. So I think I found a set for like less than 10 bucks. Sometimes you can even find one for less than $5 that has five to 10 brushes, really cheap, and you get a bit of a variety. However, uh, at that price point, the brushes generally fall apart fairly quickly. Sometimes they'll even, like literally, the, the top half will come detached from the handle <laughs> right in the middle of painting. I've had that happen to me um, with those cheaper brush sets. So um, you just go through the brushes a lot faster, so it makes more sense to ultimately invest a little more up front, maybe go for a mid-range price brush. You'll get a higher quality brush that will last longer and will produce better paintings ultimately. The second thing I wish I had known is the fact that you need to maintain the highlights or basically the white of your paper when you're painting with watercolor. 
There are some exceptions, but generally when you look at a watercolor painting and see white, that is just the white of the paper. Whereas with other paints like acrylic and oils, you can add white paint over the top to get your highlights. With watercolor, you have to almost work in um, kind of like a reverse mindset where you are not painting over the top of any area that's gonna have a highlight, especially a larger area. Again, I mentioned there are some exceptions where you can use like some white ink over the top of your watercolor paint or um, a gouache paint that's not too watered down. Um, so there's always exceptions, but in general, you don't want to just lay a bunch of paint down and disregard the areas that need to be your white highlights. So I wish I had known that going in when I first tried watercolors, because I definitely was not doing that. I was just laying paint down all over the place. <laughs> the third thing I wish I had known is about the lifting technique. Now, with other types of paint, where you can either kind of scrape up the lower layers, like with oils, especially when you use a solvent, or with acrylic, just wait for it to dry, paint right over the top. With watercolors, it's a little harder to fix mistakes because you can't just paint over them. So if you lay paint down in an area you don't intend or it's a little too dark, you need to be able to lift it. And I didn't know that that was something you could even do with watercolors. So essentially lifting paint is kind of reintroducing some water to your paint, whether it's wet or dry, st or still wet or dry, and then just kind of like uh, taking away some of that paint pigment from the surface of your paper. So um, making corrections is definitely a bit more of a challenge and a process with watercolors and lifting paint is a way you can do that. So I wish I had known that was even a possibility with watercolors when I first tried them. The fourth thing I wish I had known is that the more water you have in your brush, the less control you have, or the more water that is on your surface, on your paper. Um, it can be very easy to think, oh, watercolor, I'll just add more water, that, that will help fix things. But in fact, it can kind of work against you and create a little more of a mess and your paint's gonna move to areas that maybe you didn't intend. So, and again, I definitely experienced that the first time I tried, I thought, well, I'll just add some more water and then just things just, just went all over the place. <laughs> Oh, it was a great mess. So I, so yeah, that can just make things a little harder for you. Finally, the fifth thing I wish I had known is kind of two pronged. First, that it's important to work in layers with watercolor because, and this is kind of the second part of it, because uh, watercolor paints, even after they have dried, once you introduce water to them again, even on your paper surface, they reactivate and start moving around again. So <laughs> it's really important to kind of wait um, between stages of your painting, wait for things to dry and then build up layers over time. And also understand that when you introduce water, especially a lot of water back to the surface of your paint, it's going to reactivate and move around again. And, and yet again, it can just kind of similar with the more water you have in your brush, the less control you have. Um, when you're not really waiting and working in layers, like everything's just going to kind of like blend or, or kind of get muddied together and we'll get kind of these muddled paintings. So definitely wish I had known that. And I hope these um, pieces of advice and knowledge help you as well if you are just starting with watercolors or maybe haven't started yet. Now you have some of those very basic things um, in mind that I wish I had also had in mind when I first tried them. I'm gonna uh, share another video in a couple days where I'm gonna be kind of going just a little in depth with demonstrating a couple watercolor techniques and um, if you have any questions about my watercolor courses that will be coming out, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment or if you want to share anything about like your experience with watercolor, if you've tried watercolors before, please feel free to share that again in the comments. I would love to hear from you. It's a lot of fun to just kind of have this community and, and hear what people have experienced um, with their own paintings and, and stuff. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And again, be on the lookout for that next video in just a couple days.